All right, what's up, Houdat Nation? And thanks for joining us on the Dome Patrol Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff, and I am not drunk because I am nursing a two-day hangover from the LSU-Bama game. <laughs> did Would not you, drink what, today. What kind of fruity beverage did you drink Saturday? Uh, I did the standard vodka and uh, cran mango. I had a couple of those, <laughs> and then I drank Miller Lite the rest of the game, the rest of the night, apparently until like 1 in the morning. You had some semen, too. 12 hours. What now? Oh, that... Uh, you don't remember that? <clears throat> what was that, anyway? Some kind of eggnog liqueur. It's like 40% proof. Oh, oh eggnog. That's right. Yeah. It was kind of like a rum chata kind of night. All right. I got to hear a TV in the background or something. But yeah, anyway, uh, I, don't know what, now, I don't know what's more shocking. The fact that the Saints... Uh, actually, hang on. Let me uh, get recording again. Right, let's try this again. For you live streamers, you're going to hear the second entry. That's why we are recording live, <laughs> and you get to see it all over again. What's up, Houdat Nation, and thanks for joining us on the Dome Patrol Podcast. I'm your host, I'm your host, dr- Drunk, and I'm not Jeff. <laughs> I'm still drunk from Saturday night, uh, or I'm nursing a hangover. Either way, LSU-Bama was the highlight of the weekend. Now, I will say, I don't know what was more shocking. Uh, the fact that the Saints underestimated the Falcons or that we as fans didn't think that this year's team was capable of something so obvious. Uh, the only thing stopping this weekend from being one of the all-time greatest weekends in Louisiana football was the damn Saints for getting to show up in the Dome on Sunday. Or maybe the Saints wanted LSU to maintain all the glory this weekend. It was a, a favor. <laughs> A gesture of goodwill. So uh, I would say this week's show, we've got Scott on, big LSU fan, big LSU guy. Uh, this week's show is going to be part <coughs> celebration and part what the hell is barking in the background and what happened on Sunday. So put your seatbelt on, give your hands and legs inside your earbuds at all times, and enjoy the show. Jason, welcome to the show. What's your dog doing? Uh, the dog is sitting up, looking out the window and barking. So <laughs> still, still getting used to the new house. Uh, what dogs do. Well, Renee's not here yet, so normally I'd record upstairs, but I don't want to leave these rascals downstairs. Who knows what they're going to chew, but then if I bring them upstairs, they're going to stay upstairs. They're going to bark. So that really wasn't a perfect uh, situation tonight, but That's got to um, but uh, I am That's drinking j- just just a tiny bit. I've got uh, I got my boxed wine in a plastic cup now because, you know, I'm really cla- I'm really classing it up. <laughs> Stepping it up for really, night. It's got big the dogs. Levels. Right. Big time. Big so I'll go levels. with a one and a half. All right. <clears throat> and Scott, welcome back to the show. Uh, do you have a number and or you want to explain the sunglasses? Uh, I do not have a number. I have to go to work later. I'm drinking water. Well, the sunglasses. So your boy Gunn was on a couple weeks ago and. He was hilarious, by the way. Y'all should have him on again. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but anyway, he was talking about he was wearing his sunglasses, so he wouldn't look directly at the cat, and it wouldn't annoy him during the show. So I'm trying to wear the sunglasses to not look directly at my kids or wife, so maybe they'll stop annoying me. <laughs> I don't think it'll work, but hey, you know, figure give it a shot. No, as long as nobody's going to cut anybody's toenails. <clears throat> All right, and we got watching us, Jason, Scott, uh... Well, y'all are there. Okay. Adam Grow, Young, Don, <laughs> RJ, Pitt says, who that? Wheels is here. Classic Jeff. I guess he's talking about the intro. Vincent Burke says, I'm lying on the leather-studded couch now. Lay it on me. Oh, he's ready for his therapy session. Uh, Michael Hedden, we needed this lo- loss to humble the team. Now we know what we need to do to win it all. Michael Hedden says, also says, the dog probably is drinking from that Xbox of wine. <clears throat> I-, I added the X. All right. So I think we should call it an Xbox of wine. Maybe my Microsoft will sponsor the show. Until they do, though, we're going to have to go with the sponsor list. Game recap. (coughs) Yeah. So, I don't know how to put it other than... Well, let me start, actually, with the Saints fans' response on Twitter and, you know, calling in and whatnot. It's kind of disappointing to me. And I don't know, like it's kind of like everybody's acting like the sky's fallen. That we just—I know we lost to the one and seven Falcons, but at the same time, everybody's just two weeks ago. Everybody was saying how Sean Payton, coach of the year. Now, I mean, there's people calling for his head. Oh, that lazy son of a bitch! Oh, he's a terrible coach. He's a terrible play caller. Put this into perspective. I mean, it's the same thing with uh, Bama fans calling for Saban to be fired. I was about to say the same thing. Just it's just the, ridiculous. 
It's just in the moment, you're angry, you're frustrated. You just lost to the fucking Falcons. Like, I get the anger, but there's just there's so many stupid people out there. I mean, come on. That's why I, I just I ignore all that shit. You know? Look, they, they came out and they played like dog shit. It happens. It happens at least once a year. <clears throat> we were so – the problem is, too, we were so Bad overconfident. Things. We were like, there's no way we're going to lose to this team Sunday. Just absolutely no way. We're talking 50 burgers. You know, we're, we're, we're going to break – we're going to make Matt Ryan cry, shit in his pants. And they just – the lines just got fucking whooped. And you, you could tell from the, from the start of the game, as it was going on, you're like – this is just it. And the game was close the whole time. And you're thinking, okay, just something, some kind of momentum getter. The, the Traquan catch was, it was a great catch. Like maybe that'll spur him on. And it was just, nope. And at that point you're like, okay, that's, that's just what today is going to be. Yeah. Both lines, offensive, defensive lines. That's, that's the game right there. All right, Scott, you actually predicted, or at least were worried that this was going to be a trap game. Yeah. Are you happy uh, with yourself? No, I'm not happy. Well, Why would I fucking be happy? No, well, I'm not happy. Because you were right. You know, <clears throat> I, I, I'd rather be wrong in this instance. Um, I kind of fall into the more pissed off phase. I'm not calling for anybody's head, and I understand the bigger picture of we're still 7-2 and two and still in lead of the division, but I'm pissed. Like, it's the fucking Falcons. Like, if you're going to fucking lose like that, Lose against somebody else, not the fucking Falcons. Like my hate for them is so high. Like it's. But this is why it's games like this that make it <clears throat> the rivalry. What it is? It's, uh, it's not a. I mean, we would have evened it so. up too on this one, wouldn't we? We were one game back in the Hall time head to head. I know it's very close. Yeah, it's exactly. close. And 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 one. I think the thing that pisses me off the most is just they looked like unprepared. We had a bye week before this. Atlanta had a bye week before this. We spent our time doing fashion shows and getting engaged, and they must have spent time practicing. Like, that's what it looked like. I know that's not what happened, but that's what it fucking looked like. Perception is reality sometimes, and that's what it fucking looked like. Well, I mean, and I, I'm pissed. So, and I, 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 and because you see people kind of saying, like, telling people, I'll block you, and you're dead to me if you suggest that that's what it is or whatever. Because it's again, every it's like the loss, everybody's turning on each other for some reason rather than rallying together. But, and I, I, I'm kind of with you, Scott. Like, it's not like the engagement party and this and that is not what it was. But it, it is kind of like they, they lost sight. Uh, they lost their focus. And, and it's not that that was what it was. It was I think the bye week after the seven and one start. The way the seven and one start, the intensity, the focus that they had. They let. They had to like. They had to. <laughs> decompress it's like an instant pot you had to let the steam out or else they're all gonna just blow up and i think it's just taken yeah. two weeks to rec- it's gonna take two it's like you have the bye week and this week next week they're gonna come back focused and even like Kyrie robinson they, was tweeting like this happens yeah, with this football right. and that's how you know this season's gonna be fire from the rest of the way forward and actually for, for once like Kyrie right. robinson like because yeah. he always just a bit of a hothead on twitter sometimes but I tell right. you what, he put it into perspective for me. He's like, this is normal. When I played there, this happened. This is normal for the Saints. Uh, it was normal when he was in college. But sometimes this is what you need. It's it's my crisis. It's my Sean Payton crisis. It's, it's a crisis. It's normal. But don't do it against the Falcons. That's all I'm saying. But it's best <laughs> like, to do it against the Falcons. That's don't how, do it against Because if you do it against like the Colts or something or something <clears throat> like every, or some random team, then – Do it against an AFC team. Please do it against well, an know, AFC team. I know, I know. But if you did, it. It, the, the, the fire would only burn about into like week one of the playoffs. This fire is going to go all the way. And that's the other thing I think that I'm happy about is we lost this game – on our own, there was no help from the referees. There was no anything like that. Like this, I mean, there was a lot of penalties, but it was yeah. us. Like we lost this game legitimately, and I take a little bit of solace in that. Maybe the NFC Championship game taught us that. To where I'm not. Yeah, I, I was upset about it, but I wasn't devastated by it. You were still hungover. That's a big part. Of it. <laughs> That's a big, big part of it. <laughs> yeah, but also too, like I, yeah, I don't want to lose the fucking Falcons, but I'm kind of like, eh. Like it didn't, and, and some of that too is is moving on, you're not letting the Saints control your life. I mean, when you're like you're really devastated because your favorite team lost a, a, a regular season football game, like come on, like you can be mad, be angry. It sucks. To, I I don't want to lose to the goddamn Falcons. 
Um, but you know, again, seven and two. That's where I don't think we the st- players did either, yeah. right? I mean, the coach didn't. I mean, they they they're they're more upset about this, I'm sure. I hope than we are, and you know they are. And the good thing but is, the we only got a couple. Showed up. You got to look at the intensity. That yeah. that's you know, ask how it was their Super Bowl. Talent. It yeah, it this, was their Super Bowl. They showed up. <laughs> like LSU did in Alabama. You know, they showed up and said, there is no way we lose this game. This is the one game that we have to win no matter what. If we could lose every other game, they wanted to beat us in our house. We showed up strutting like Teddy Bridgewater behind the dance squad, you know? <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, Jason Lake says, we got hit in the face and we will bounce back stronger. Michael Rozier says, losses happen. It's how you recover that defines you as a team. Chris Farmer's joined us. Uh, and Sansbury says, we couldn't run the ball as good old Jim Mora rant. <clears throat> diddly poo. Now, here's my question is to you. Let's start with Jason. Did the Saints offense suffer because of play calling or execution or both? And I know you said the line, but. Right. It, 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 there's a little of both. I mean, they only ran the ball 11 times. <clears throat> Considering how well Murray present has ran the last two games. Um, now I know Falcons secondary is trash, and Trufant ended up, you know, was didn't, you know, play. Um, I did seem a lot, but again, you know, Atlanta had seven sacks on the season coming into yesterday, and they had six. You know, well, you just if, 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 all if, my talking if, points, Jason. Thanks. If, so. if <laughs> yeah, that, in one, I'm thing. trying. I'm trying. <laughs> and, and, I mean, and that's that's really where it was just execution, man. If the line plays better then it's, it's a totally different game. And um, Now, what do you think about the Terran Armstead's flu comment? Did you hear that part? He flew. Sean Payton said, I don't want to blame it on Terran Armstead's flu. But it's not like it was flu. It's not like it was just him, though. <laughs> the, whole line, the whole line, I mean, maybe McCoy was okay, but when, when Pete went, when Pete got hurt, I mean, he was bad when he was in. He got hurt, he came out, and Clapp just got annihilated at guard and that brings up the, the problem of nick easton you're paying him four million dollars can't even dress out boy it sure would be nice to slide in easton and guard that's why we signed him yep. four million dollars just bloop, down the drain all right all right then all right we couldn't run because we wouldn't run now scott yeah, exactly I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what I, I i mean maybe it's like jason said their secondary was garbage i don't know um but the it, offensive line, our offensive line was horrible. Like, this is the same offensive line that shut down J.J. Watt, shut down the Bears, shut down all these other fucking teams, Dallas, and they make fucking Grady Jarrett look like an all-pro. I mean, do, do, it was execution. Do you think, <clears throat> like, Kamara's not 100% and they just – that's part of why they weren't using him? No, because they didn't use Murray either. I mean, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> no, it's present. You know. At the, um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, absent for sure. No, because, I mean, Kamara was in on a lot of plays. They just weren't, you know, he was lining up in a slot a lot. I don't know if they were maybe trying to use him as maybe like a number two wide receiver or what. I mean, he only carried the ball four times, but he averaged six yards a pop. So six yards was, a carry. I mean, yeah. give him the fucking ball. Right. For whatever reason, they, they didn't. So we, we, it's not we, like we were down that it was not like we were down that much where we had to start throwing it. Like, right. He could have kept and running you threw the ball. it 45 times to 11 run plays. I mean, Sean Payton did not. It's almost like when he's got, like, when, you know, the argument about Drew and people saying put Teddy in. Like, to me, the reason you would say put Teddy in isn't because you think Teddy's better than Drew, but because it's going to force Sean Payton to be a better coach because he's going to have to put together a game plan that has a balanced attack. Jeez, I mean, I don't know. forty-five I don't know. passes. I don't know. You didn't need to do it. I mean, th- this Drew is a Reed standard. Is, is he trying to make up for the missed week statistically? <laughs> he's got. He's got to get those attempts up. He's got to qualify for all the stats. Something, something. Shit, Chris Farmer. I think they partied at Peyton's engagement party. I mean, they might have been hungover. I was. All right, Ben Shirley. No. That game was tough to watch, but it was not that surprising. It's Atlanta and New Orleans. It's happened before. It's a classic I mean, you Sean know Payton. It's a rivalry game. Yeah. <clears throat> throw, the, it, throw the records out the window, you know. It is a classic Sean Payton game, though. Like he's always got this games where, yeah, we just we pass too much and we just come out playing flat and we just get beat by a team we shouldn't lose to. It happens all. It happens every year. Seems like. I did see somebody tweet uh, in '09. I think we lost to Tampa. They were like two and seven or something. So they're like kind of you know we've been drawing comparisons to '09. So they were kind of yeah drawing that comparison. So, but I think. But not, you know, I mean, 
That's a little it, different. It, it happens. It, it's a little different, but it happens. It happens pretty much every year. There's just a dud game, man. This was it. And that's okay. Dud. Maybe Sean Payton told him, guys, take two weeks off. Wrapped <laughs> up because we got a long run ahead of us. Um, Jeremy Martin. If this I game think... was, in fact, the Falcons Super Bowl, it's important to note that they won it. It's 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 the competition more or less intense, or is the competition more or less intense between division rivals than in the postseason, let alone the actual Super Bowl? As we, I mean, I think the Falcons showed up with more intensity than they did their own Super Bowl that they blew a uh, 25-point lead in. Let us never forget. Yes. <laughs> Don't I, can't for I hate to... life. Who that? <laughs> <laughs> FML, he added. Uh, all right, next next question I did have, though. All right, so we couldn't or wouldn't run. Scott, how is it that the Falcons actually found a way to run against a Saints defense that has become known for I mean, again, run? just a lack of execution. Same thing. Both lines sucked. Um, you know, they did they run. Don't I don't – they didn't have 100 – I mean, nobody. Uh, we still kept our streak of keeping under 100 yards. So I mean, well, in, in individual, right? Individual, individual. Because right. because Devontae Freeman got hurt, and they brought in Hill. Right. But that that was part of it too. The run, their run game, they controlled the clock, and so, you know, all those times we couldn't get off the field on third down, they were just killer. And we had killer. a lot of penalties, like six, uncharacteristic. Right, six penalties on third down that resulted in first down for them. So, all right, yeah. So, but the and so you can't say like the NFL screwed us because we shot ourselves in the foot. It was and it, you said six, six first hard. downs by penalty. First downs by penalty. Twelve okay. penalties overall. Okay, and there was a lot of those. I, remember, there was that one drive that I felt like we had the Falcons stop. We gave the Falcons like fifty yards on that drive. They just kept moving down the field because of us. Yeah, I mean it, it was I a think total all disaster. Played, like, but. <sighs> What, what do you take – I mean, this is just uncharacteristic. It's so much – everything points to lack of focus. Their heads were not I – mean, how, and how, how is your head not in the Falcons game? The Falcons, division rival. We didn't treat it like a division rival. We treated it like the Miami Dolphins. How are you going to tell me that – and Sean Payton doesn't get that. He gets it. All these players get it, but they weren't focused. There's like, for the entire team to not be focused. I, don't know. I mean, I mean, look, look what just happened. They went. Breeze got hurt. They went. Somehow they went six and zero. And then we get everybody healthy, and we can't even beat the Falcons. That is the craziest thing. We they were the healthiest. Didn't even score a touchdown. Yeah, didn't even score a touchdown. Didn't even score double digit points. First time, no double digit points in the Superdome in how many games? A hundred and something games or something? I thought yeah, it was like, we, we it's were a one lot. away from tying the record. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't you can't tell me this is an anomaly. Like there's there's they're not a there's not a why not explanation. It's 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 a dud game. It happens. It yeah. I mean, it's a dud it's game. Just... It happens. It sucks. On something. It, it they sucks. had to be focused happens, on something but... else. Maybe. Maybe Action they were looking ahead. Maybe parties. they didn't want to show the Falcon. We got to play them again in three weeks. Maybe we got a few of these division games. Like, hey, throw this one away. And... You know, and 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 Jeff, some you kind of said. I think you had Texas. Like the play calling was very like vanilla. I think you had said. Yeah, and they, it was. It. There was this one time they threw the same the same pass twice in a row to the left side and then a little while later on like the next drive because they couldn't get a fucking first down they go and they do two passes to the right same exact play i mean there there's it's carl smith's playbook i yeah, i don't know it was bad. in a row it's not even like you recognize and when i'm recognizing plays you know it's pretty easy it was so bad that it almost seemed like intentional like i don't know Give like was Peyton money. trying to create this crisis? Was he trying to show, hey, we're not so, we're not so fucking great, you know, kind of thing? Ah, he wants to keep, he wants to keep Dan Quinn around. <laughs> Maybe that's that's oh, Dan Quinn was close to getting fired. And that's the other thing, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. I mean, it was so bad it almost seemed intentional. Okay, so as you um, look at the rest of the season, what does this loss mean? I mean if we bounce back, nothing. It's, I think it's going to be. I mean. I mean, maybe, I, maybe, it'll, maybe it'll bring them together, galvanize them to, you know, finish strong. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. Yeah, it's not the worst thing like that to get a loss like this. I mean, it's the NFL. It happens. Are you... Now, if they go out in next week and 
do the same thing, then then I think we got right. Then you can start to worry a little bit. What about how it affects like again, you know, the seeding with San Francisco and Green Bay, even Seattle, even. I mean, Seattle's got two losses right now. I mean, yeah, and shit. Sa- Seattle's playing San Francisco tonight, so you know. I do not um, want another situation <laughs> where we have to go play a wild card team in their stadium. No, especially like in Green Bay in the snow, and I mean it was fucking snowing yesterday. You know, imagine what it's going to be like in January. You know, you don't want to have to go there. Um, it's crazy that right. two losses, but now and that's the other thing though. Keep in mind, everybody, it is two losses, and you have a bunch of teams with two losses, but there's still seven more games to play in the season, and that's well, a, and lot a lot of, the, of football. And a lot of these teams are going to play each other. I mean, Seattle plays San Francisco twice. We've got to play San Francisco. Um, you know, they got to play it'll, the Rams. It'll, yeah, it'll 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 shake its it'll break shake out. out. All right. Yeah. All right. Anything else y'all got to say about this game? Because I, I mean, I, don't, um, I think we'll the big thing coming out of the game, big thing coming out of the game is the Lattimore injury. I mean, I think. Yeah, that's not uh, good. Yeah. What do we? Have you heard anything about that? Week to week, week is what I've heard. Week strained week. hams, strained hamstring. Oh, those things can either linger or go away. So you so you got to assume he's going to miss a few weeks, at least. And we're going, you know, we got what Mike Evans next week. Yeah, Mike Evans and Godwin next week. And Godwin next week, you know. Uh, I don't know. It might but be a, might be a, might be a track more. meet. That helps. Probably it is. helps. But might be, a track, I, might be a track meet. I mean, you got to think maybe he'll be back for Atlanta, but I would say probably not. So you're looking at maybe at least three games without him. I mean, maybe it's better than we think. I mean, hell, we thought Eli Apple was going to be done for the season, and he, he suited up the next game. So. Yeah. And have anybody heard anything on Michael Thomas? I know the trainers are looking at him after that last play. I haven't no heard idea. anything. No idea. No, but he did have, uh, what, 13 catches or something? And 13 for 152. Yeah, the next wide receiver uh, was Traquan Smith with one catch. Yep. And, 13 yards. Uh, well, Gin did drop a few. Yeah. <laughs> and so did Traquan. <laughs> yeah. But when Traquan hit, he caught that one that kind of made up for it when he got he lost just fucking mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, but, you know, I, does it worry you looking ahead and as you get looking at the playoffs and you start to realize that you do have a singular threat at wide receiver and that's it, even though the heat, that one threat is two players worth? Well, I don't think Jared, it's anything new. Right. We, I know. They know that. Well, yeah. But also, actually, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, Jared Cook had another solid game, six catches, 74. So, you know, he's turning into the weapon that we, that we, that we thought he was going to be. So yeah. that's a good thing. I mean, it's, just, it's the same thing as last year. I mean, we. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, yeah, you're right. We, we walked into playoffs with less threats last year. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And we would have won the Super Bowl. Okay. Um, all right. I want to move us on to look at him tweets. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that and then we'll talk about LSU because we'll stay on topic. All right, all right. Let's see what we got here. First tweet. Looks like this one's from Wheels. It must be opposite day today. He sent this yesterday. Run defense is garbage. O-line is a sieve. Kick returner is exceptional. <laughs> he did have some good returns yesterday. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. That, that, and that, you talk about that momentum shift. Uh, there was one that, one that he almost broke for the touchdown that I was like, okay, there you go. Let's roll. Let's go. Mm-hmm couldn't capitalize on it we should have had a Taysom hill play like to pull the momentum back in like have him truck somebody that would have <laughs> that would have kick-started it man he did throw a nice pass to michael thomas though. hell of a catch by michael thomas yeah just, you talking get... about? Taysom threw a pass to michael thomas oh oh yeah did you, did Sorry, you not I, watch I, I, mean, I might have actually dozed off for a second <laughs> <laughs> that, that did happen once or twice uh, yeah. all right I, mean, I was curled up on the couch all right. Aaron King, I don't want to hear about the refs. I want to hear about Sean Payton's game plan or lack thereof, how he abandoned the run and the penalties the Saints actually committed dumbasses from the coach to the towel boy. So here's the anger sent again. This was immediately following the game. Right. It's excusable. Right. And he followed it with the problem is always Sean Payton's cockiness. That he didn't even consider that the highlight to the fail clown season would be beating us in the dome. We got caught sleeping in a coma. Fuck the Falcons, and this shit could not be should not be happening. And that I guess that's kind of the question, right? Is it goes back to how did he let the team 
not like I said, it, shit? it I almost seemed intentional. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you Diddly think about how much? I mean, how much preparation they put into each week, and it, there, like the amount of preparation that you put into each week, you you expect at least a touchdown in the Superdome against the Falcons. At least the Falcons that that are that are as bad as they've been this year. Right. You do. But Yeah. Hey. All right. Maybe maybe Sean Payton did like Dan Quinn and he let somebody else do the play call calling. Like <laughs> you know, his fiance's son, if she has one. I don't know. You know He was out partying he was out partying with Vince Vaughn too long. <laughs> right. Hey there, little tacker. You wanna call a few plays? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh CJ. Who that Chris says, I can't believe I spent that much on beer in the dome for that shit show performance. But as usual, <laughs> I love my team and I'm a Sunday alcoholic and will continue to buy twelve dollar beer. <laughs> uh, yeah. I know. I think Probably I ended up buying it. I ended up buying two at the game. One draft and then I go back to to get it. It's like, oh yeah, I'll take a draft. Oh, we're out. Wait, meanwhile, while they're out, the guy's pouring and the beer's coming out. I'm like, what are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? It's pouring and then it goes out. <laughs> right then and there. They ran out of beer. Wow, that just insulted. Like, oh, draft huh? beer. Trap beer, yeah, oh, still, but but still, yeah, still cost, yeah. It's hard, it's it's hard to drink in the dome. It really is. All right, Daniel Benet says, I think the state of Louisiana used up all of its voodoo Saturday night. Go Tigers! Uh, it's the only thing that makes sense, and why the Saints played so horribly. I mean, Maybe. at hey, this point, it, I'll take any right. explanation. Jeremy Martin, Jason, why did, I, or what? Can I ask Jason? How was the crowd? Was it? Did it? Did it seem were they pumped? Did it seem like they were kind of mellow or we how, were, how were they? It definitely seemed pumped at the beginning, uh, and we tried. There just wasn't a lot to to cheer about. I mean, we were ready. It just didn't, you know. It seemed normal. I was Once again, if there was any kind of hangover uh, effect. I don't think so, but I mean, there were a lot of people once again wearing LSU shit to a Saints game, which just continues to absolutely baffle me. I just well, don't great, under. Yeah. I just don't understand. Why you feel the need to wear an LSU hat to a Saints game? I just don't. I don't get it. Are you okay with somebody wearing a Saints hat to an LSU game? It never happens. You've never, <laughs> I you've never seen that ever. I'm gonna wear a Saints hat to an LSU game this year. Do it. Just I'm, for and, you. And, and you're, you're gonna get side eye looks. I'm telling you, <laughs> it, it is. It is the darn. It is one of these unsolved, darndest things. That's all I can say. It's a darndest thing. You should do a documentary on Netflix on that. <laughs> Right. Especially since they took all the Disney stuff down now. You saw that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we knew it comes coming. out tomorrow. Yeah. That's right. All right. Jeremy Martin, why does the Saints offense, which has all this talent at the helm, in the line, in the receivers, Thomas Cook Hill, and the backfield, occasionally get completely shut down? You know, we talk about this happening every year, and, it, and that is a legitimate question. How is it that this uh, the most amazing offense in the history of the NFL sometimes gets, I mean, not just held back, but completely shut down? It, it not, I don't think it's just us. Like, it happens to other teams, too. Yeah. You just don't I mean, see it, it. You don't notice it. You don't it notice happens. it. Green Bay got fucking shellac last week. Oh, well, we did it in 09 to the Patriots <clears throat> and the Giants. Yeah. And every other team. I mean, played, pretty much. I mean we fucking pulled – we got Tom Brady pulled out the game. I mean, yeah, it happens. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, know, I don't know how to explain it. It, I mean, it just yeah. happens. Emotion. Mo, mo, it's motivation. It's, it's sometimes you get up for the game or you don't. Like the Bermuda Triangle. Sometimes you disappear and sometimes you don't. Like Bermuda shorts? All right, Davis Douglas. Any given Sunday in full effect, guys. Remember the Jets? Remember the Jets beat the Cowboys? The Browns beat the Ravens? Of course, I'm disappointed, but now Thanksgiving cannot come soon enough. Right? Right. Cut it. All talks about how important, how on purpose it might have been. So it was voodoo. It was on purpose. They were hungover. And they took two weeks off. All right. How can a team that is superior to another in talent coaching lose a four-quarter game because they underestimated their opponent? If they're the better team, why couldn't they just make adjustments in, throughout the game? So yeah, tell, tell me about that part. Like, okay, you come out flat first quarter, second quarter, but you didn't make adjustment. The only adjustment they made was to throw the running plays in the garbage. Well, hold on. Well, e- even adjustments oh. aren't going to overcome the fact that the offensive line is playing like dog shit. I mean, maybe may, maybe Peyton looked at it and said, you know what? The, the line doesn't have it today. Our best chance to win is just, just chuck it around. I mean, if, if you can't block for the running backs, at least give Bre- Drew a chance. 
Maybe maybe that's it. I, I that don't know. That didn't work either. Six sex I mean, later. It, it didn't, but maybe that's what he was thinking of. You know. Huh. It's possible. It's because po- sometimes you look at team. I'm like, yeah, we don't have it today. Like you knew he knew they didn't have it. He probably knew they didn't have it before they ever came out on the field. He's, you, know, you could feel that. You could feel it. And I mean, that actually yeah. is. A, you know what, Jason? That is a believable explanation. Absolutely. Hey, they don't have it. Best chance we're gonna have right now is to put it in Drew Brees' hands and sling it around. Find an open guy. Right. Hope it works. Hope Teddy can catch. <laughs> and it, that that happens in all of sports. Like, I mean, if you look at baseball, I mean, there's games where you come out and you lose sixteen nothing, and the next night you come out and you, you know, you're, you know, pitcher throws a no hitter. It's yeah. just, you know, it's it just it. Football, it's a little more immediate because the season is so short. I mean, of the three leagues, it's the shortest season. So it's every game is has a certain level of importance. Yeah. So when you lay a dud, it's like amplified by times 10. And then when you lay a dud against your division rival, <laughs> stings the nostrils. Yes, Mordecai, with Lattimore possibly missing time, do you think our defense will be able to handle the loss at cornerback? Or is it time to panic? It's coming at a terrible time since we face Mike Evans and Chris Godwin next week. I all said that earlier as well, too. Well, we just might as well not retweet. I'll just hit all the points before we get to them. It's not quite time to panic yet, but... If we lose I mean, next week, are you panicking? Depends on how we lose. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'd be a little worried. I wouldn't panic. But I'd be very disappointed. Hey, well, we could still go 7-9. and nine. Oh, God. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, we can't. No, we can't. Uh, Vince. <laughs> God, so can the Falcons. All right. Uh, Vin, <laughs> big easy guy, John. On, on the stream said, I stayed up until 6 a.m. in Tokyo to watch this shit show. But he tweeted uh, about an hour ago that said, this game boiled down to three things, all correctable. We gave up six sacks. We gave them like six first downs via penalty. And the defense sucked on third down. All things very correctable. And I'll be honest with you, even after uh, Lattimore went down, I don't feel like I noticed the Falcons get any better in their passing game. Matt Ryan only threw for 180 yards. Yeah. So it's not like they yeah. threw it all and over. It was like a 54-yard play, wasn't it? Yeah, and Eli Apple <clears throat> did a really great is. job uh, stepping up as the number one. I mean, Eli, Eli Apple is becoming one of my favorite players on this defense. His mom has a lot to do with that, too. I just love her Twitter. Yeah, her Twitter is pretty good. <laughs> She's fire. It was just not being able, you know, they, they converted a lot of third down, you know, third downs. That's, it, it was just killer. Extending the drives for them and controlling the clock. It's brutal. Just, just brutal to watch there. All right. Now there's an interesting fact. Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Uh, Davis Douglas says, did you know that Breeze and Ryan have faced off against each other more times than any other two quarterbacks in the Super Bowl era? I did not know that. I didn't. I, didn't I mean, I guess so. It would be more than uh, what? Who would? Who else would you say? Uh, Manning and Brady, but not Brady. really because they no. have to play two times a year. No, it's got it's got to be divisional yeah. opponents. A division. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that's pretty interesting. And I'm sure. Brady and it kind of shows too the, the the kind of the strength of our division. You know, we play one of the toughest divisions in the. I mean, I know it doesn't look like it on paper right now, but we do. You know, look at some other divi- – look at the Patriots division. You know? Right, it's not the every other team ex- Every other team except for the Patriots has the rotating quarterback. You yeah, know? that's true. All right, that's all I got for look at him tweets. Uh-huh. Uh, let's do a quick uh, change over here. Uh-oh. Uh oh, he's going. He's going even Roll further. Up, it's not. Oh, it's God. not just the hat. <laughs> not just the hat. Off, please. We're going Put full on wardrobe off. change. Welcome to the Go Show, right? The Coach O. Uh, it's gumbo time, everybody. Uh-huh. <laughs> Two scoops. <laughs> All right, LSU uh, won the national. I mean, they won in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> the way LSU fans are acting, you would think they were the Falcons that beat the Saints in the Superdome. <laughs> All right, real quickly, I mean, we won't spend an exorbitant amount of time on this topic but because uh, we are a Saints show before anything else. But, hey, LSU, if you are going to say something good about this weekend, how about them Tigers? Uh, it was an amazing game. Um, nerve-wracking at times. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, 
fucking Joe Burrow, man. Uh, put on the show. Him and uh, I can't. The running back, Hilaire. Oh, Alaire, um, yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. Alaire was Alaire was a Alaire was a grown ass man uh, <laughs> last week. He was a Latavius Murray. Uh, but the so like I got to watch the first forty five minutes to an hour, and then I had to go. My niece was in a play, so I DVR'd it. Left, came back, didn't want to know anything, so I came back, watched it. But well, we talked about it last week with Luke. You know, if, if not now, then when? We, you know, we knew coming in with a great defense and a shit offense was not going to work. It hasn't worked for eight years. This is the best chance that we had a team that could score points. And look, we had to score 46 to beat them. And, but they were, they were able to do that. Just, inc- just incredible. Get a, just that, that big lead at the end of the half scoring those two touchdowns in like 30 seconds. You're just like, yeah. okay, this is, this is it. And then Bama did come back, but every, every time when Burrow needed, an answer for him. Right. Yes. And that, right. that's, that's the difference. Well, and, and to do it in Bama, right, it tells you – I mean, right. I, at this point, though, you have to believe – I mean, yes, they're ranked number one, but you have to believe, like, LSU is – it's the favorite to win the national championship. Who else, I mean, Ohio State, do you really believe Ohio State can beat LSU? I think they could. They could? I mean – Yeah, I think, could, I, think they, I, I, think they, I think they're good enough. <clears throat> I yeah, can't definitively like say for time. sure. I would feel confident about LSU, but that's that's what they've done. They've made me feel confident about them. But Ohio State has just as much just as much talent. They could win the game. So it's not it's not a it's not like LSU is a clear favorite. I don't know. After Saturday, I feel like they are. Yeah, I mean, Bama's you know just been a juggernaut for so long, and to just go into their stadium and beat them was just unbelievable. I mean. You know, it, it, it almost was kind of like their Super Bowl in a way. Um, you worry about a hangover or a trap game next week against Ole Miss. Um, so, you know, they, you know, it'll they'll kind of prove some stuff, you know, next week, I think, too, uh, and how they react and respond. I mean, you saw, you know, all the, the crowd that showed up at the airport when LSU got home, and, you know, it was very kind of reminiscent of the Saints, you know, um, showing up at the airport. And it was just great. It was a great time. Um, Jeff and I watched the game together and, uh, we had a good time after we had to shuffle some seats around a little bit for <laughs> some good luck purposes. Yeah. But, uh, other than that, it, you know, it was a really good time. Um, there, it was very, actually really interesting. I mean, the, when we were sitting a certain way, they were playing really well. And then the seats got shuffled a little bit and, and they started playing bad. We went back to the original seating arrangement and <laughs> they turned it back around. Go. Funny I think how when that, that works. girl when that girl left and that's when I kind of kicked in. <laughs> that girl. Um, I uh, saw something earlier that um, I don't know if it was the first half had LSU, the points LSU had scored or the most points scored on a Nick Saban team um, going back. I think it was like some maybe twenty years to when he was at Michigan State. He hadn't had that many points scored against him since back then. And it was Michigan State against Purdue, and Drew Brees was the quarterback. Tie in. Yeah, they. I mean, they they really they really lit it up. I mean, Burrow, yeah, he completed his first what 13, 14 passes, I think. Yeah. The offense, you know, they were confident, they were crisp, they executed, like they had the belief that they they could win, and they actually pulled it off. Yeah, Chris Farmer oh. says no way, Coach O lets them overlook Ole Miss. He always wants to destroy them. Yeah. yeah, that's true because, you know, he was there. Yeah. So. <laughs> what you doing with your light? <laughs> he's, he's being like that Tuscaloosa Stadium, like in Alabama. <laughs> where uh-huh. <laughs> the lights keep flashing yeah. off. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That was quite – Jeff's like, is something wrong with my television? <laughs> like he was legit it. worried <laughs> that if something was wrong with – I'm like, no, dude, that's the lights. He's like, oh, okay. I don't yeah, like them was, lights. Yo, y'all need to leave them lights on. Quit flickering. You're going to waste it, electricity. It was, to it was pretty couple. cool to see. Um, it was pretty cool to see those lights. It was a little annoying at times, but it was pretty cool. Yeah, was I'd love for LSU to get. Bored. Yeah, I'd love to see be... LSU get something like that. That'd, that'd be, be awesome. pretty sweet. Absolutely. All right, uh, that's it for the LSU piece. Uh, so I guess now it's time for pickums. All right, let's see what we got here. Jeff, uh, you went three and two last week. You won the week out of the three of us. So. 
You're sitting there at 24 and 21. Uh, I went two and three, so I'm sitting. I'm still above 500, but I'm 23 and 22. And Luke, ooh, Luke went one and four. Not a good yeah. week for not a good week for Luke. Greenbaum, when he's on the show, we should give him his record too. One and four. <laughs> well, uh, you were you were in the lead. You had pickums by the balls this whole season, and you, like the Saints, just showed up and crapped a bit. That's what you did. Which really upset me because I was really hoping to guest one time on the show. <laughs> nope. Now you won't be invited on the nope, show. Nope. Nope. But Mike know. will be happy about not that. If, not if some people yeah, have their stuff. Right. <laughs> All right. Now, and one thing to point out, Neil uh, went four and one. And, the, and I got to tell you what, over the last few weeks, Neil has climbed out of the basement. We really can't rag on Neil for being in last place. He's kind of in the middle. He's one game out of 500. But uh, the larger league, you do have Mordecai is in the lead. Gun, that's your boy. Uh, with a 29 and 16 record, followed by Sands, Hobbs, Desi, then Greenbaum. So you're not completely out. You're three games back. Tom and still there. Jake, me, Christian, Mino, Drew, CJG, Wheels, Ryan Angier, Jason, Davis, Douglas, Neil, <clears throat> Triple D, Kennels, Who Dat Fitz, Trevor Scott, Bruno, Big Easy Mafia, The Mailman, Oh Who Dat Be, Me So Mad, James from the UK, King Nola, Chris McGuire, Big Easy Guy, John DJZ, and Pastor Not. But that, of course, was never published. I think Neil's just taking some inspiration from Coach O when he said, we coming. We coming. We coming. <laughs> we coming. Roll Tide. What? Fuck you. <laughs> that was so oh, fucking that was, great. Yeah, that Sorry. Was that, was, that was fucking great. No, that was great. That's like that great. recruiting one of – I mean, that's going to fire up some people. Speaking of recruiting, did y'all see the LSU players go yeah. to where the, the Alabama recruits yeah. were sitting in there? They're like, that was, come on over here. Come on over here. Come on. All right, so we we moving on from LSU. Yeah. Oh, one other All thing right. uh, I will say, when Coach O's post game interview, fighting those tears back in his eyes, man, yeah. I, that that right there, that that's why I think I, the the Sunday game is an easy pill to swallow, right? That he just filled you with enough emotional stability <laughs> to, to, to get through it. It's great for him. Such a big win for him. He always talks about the state of Louisiana and all this kind of stuff. And considering when we hired him, a lot of people thought we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. Right. And Me too. I was in the yeah. boat. I was in that same boat. Like, oh, really? The and mediocre it's, it, guy. It's it's worked out. He's he's pulled the right oh. strings. <clears throat> Rumor has it it did sign Joe Brady, Brady to an extension today. Well, that would be a great. Lucrative extension. That would be great. Good. Keep him around for sure. All right, getting into. This week's slate of games. I'm not sure who's on a bye. I didn't check that out. I know there's, there's going to be a handful of teams on a bye, but we've got two pretty good matchups. One that looked good at the beginning of the season, but it's kind of fallen on and, and a bunch of bad games. So we'll start with one that's interesting in terms of the point spread. The Arizona Cardinals coming off a close loss this past week, um, I believe. I don't know. I guess I should have checked beforehand. Let me double check. Uh, they're prepared. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm very prepared. Yes, they did lose to Tampa. They lost by three to Tampa. They, so Arizona could score some points, but they lost three in a row. They traveled to San Francisco. Would you say they're in a tailspin? <laughs> Those are the tailspin. Bears. We'll get to them later. Uh, they traveled to San Francisco, played 49ers, who are playing tonight against Seattle. That game has not begun, but currently San Francisco is the last unbeaten team. Uh, it's in Frisco. 49ers are favored by 13 and Whoa. a half. Wow. Um, hmm. You know what? That I, I that's too many points. Last time though, I said that, and they whoever it was that had a thirteen and a half spread covered. Uh, but like you said yourself, Arizona can score, so I'm gonna say that they stay with them. So I'll take an Arizona. I'm gonna uh, take. Arizona. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead, I'm, Jason. Sorry. I'm taking Arizona as well. Yeah, I'm with Arizona as well. That's just too many points. A division <clears throat> game too. Yeah. And if there's one thing we know yeah. about division games. <sighs> yeah. Uh, all right. Our next game, the New England Patriots, uh, leaving the cozy confines of the AFC East. <laughs> they are coming off of a bye. They travel to Philadelphia to play an Eagles team, who I believe was also on a bye this week. How is Philadelphia? Is Philadelphia being quiet right now this year? I mean, they're not. What are they? Four and four, maybe. I mean, they're kind of respectable. They're five and four. Five okay, and four right yeah. now. I was so, gonna say they're not right. They're not. They haven't been great, outrageous. but they haven't been shitty, right? right. So, uh, so yeah. So this game's uh, 
in Philly, both teams coming off a bye should be uh, refreshed. Although based on what we saw from the Saints, who knows? One team may come out flat. But uh, Philly is getting three and a half at home. They're getting. They're getting three and a half at home. So I'm taking. <clears throat> I'm taking the home dog with Philly. <sighs> All right, Scott, you go. I'm thinking. All right. Well, why do you think? I will also take Philadelphia. Uh, I'm not confident about this pick, but they're a home dog. As Jason put it. I'm taking the Pats. Patriots. I mean, it's a right. safe pick. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, now, we'll see. Now we've got uh, the Sunday night game. Looked really good at the beginning of the season. The Chicago Bears, who are trying to right themselves from said tailspin. Uh, they beat Detroit this week, 20-13. to 13. Mitch Trubisky throws three touchdowns. What? Uh, they travel to Los Angeles to play a Rams team where Sean McVay is no longer the uh, the the, <coughs> the wonder kid that everybody thought he was. Rams really struggling. Jared Goff really struggling. They lose to Steelers this week, seventeen to twelve. So, right. <laughs> good thing they signed Jared Goff to that massive extension. <laughs> a couple of picks, you know. So. This game is in L.A. The Rams are favored by six and a half. The Rams are give, favored. giving up six and a half? Yes, they're giving up six and a half. Because it's the Bears, yeah. So the Rams are sitting there at five and four. The Bears are sitting there at four and five. I'm taking the Bears. Hmm. The Rams you know, are garbage right now. The Rams are garbage. Not that the Bears are that much better, but I see probably a low-scoring game. I can't believe, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm, I'm taking Mitch, <laughs> Mitch Trubisky. It just goes to show you how bad Jared Goff is playing right now. Six and a half. I will take the Bears as well. Their defense Damn. is going to keep them in. I know. I actually <laughs> was going to take the Rams just to be different, but it, okay. I, that's not the game to, to do that with. Okay, well, maybe it's the next one, which is our game of the week. The Houston Texans coming off. I believe they were on a bye this week as well. Yes, they were on a bye. They travel to Baltimore <clears throat> to play a Ravens team that just put it on Cincinnati this week. It wasn't really surprising, for, you know, 49-13. But Lamar Jackson continues to just play out of his mind, make an MVP case. He threw for three touchdowns <laughs> this week. He ran for another 65 yards and ran for a touchdown. Guy's just been a monster. Now this week, you know, Houston isn't 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 the Bengal. You know, they're not the Bengals, but uh, they get to go against Sean Watson, who's been playing really well. You know, Houston uh, they beat Jacksonville and London their last game. Uh, Baltimore is at home and they're favored by four. Oh, that was my threshold. All right, I'll go first just to see if you want to go different. And yeah, I'm I'll do the I'll gonna, do the opposite of whatever right, you do. I will take Baltimore. And that means you're taking the points. Baltimore. Oh. <laughs> but hooked you. Scat? Uh, Baltimore, Baltimore three-way. All right. <coughs> we all believe in Baltimore, huh? Yeah, I'm a believer. They're the... Lamar Jackson, baby. All right. Fantasy football god. All right, and now our shooting game of the week. We've got a team that's been in here probably a few times this year. The New York Jets. Coming off uh, a loss to their crosstown rival Giants, 34-27. They traveled to Washington to play the Redskins, who were coming off of a bye last week. They had a big issue with their offensive lineman, Trent Williams. Uh, he was injured, then he wasn't injured, then they're, now they're putting him on the, uh, the, the do not perform list. They're not paying him. It's been a whole fiasco. The Redskins are, are by far the worst franchise in the league. I really hope Joe Burrow doesn't find a way to get stuck there next year. Oh, because my that, gosh. Because that, if there's something that can derail Joe Burrow's NFL career, it would be the Redskins. So that's the one thing to hope for. Yeah, I hope he pulls the Eli Manning if he does, if something so, like that happens. This game's in Washington. Redskins favored by one and a half. <laughs> Dwayne Haskins will be starting the rest of the way. <clears throat> All right. Chalk out. got this time I'm really going to take the opposite of whatever you take, for real, this time. All right. Well, then. Oh, so I got to go first, then? All right. I'll yeah. take the Jets. 
All right, give me the Redskins. Can't believe I'm doing that. All right. Give me the Jets. All righty. All right, so as, as, a, as a refresher, our games, Arizona at San Francisco. San Francisco favored by 13 and a half. New England at Philly. Philly getting three and a half at home. Houston at Baltimore in our game of the week. Baltimore favored by four at home. Chicago at the Rams. Rams favored by six and a half at home. And then our shitty game, the Jets at the Redskins. Redskins favored by a point and a half. All right, get the tweets in before the kickoff, and we'll make sure we catch them and we'll post our updates on Monday morning. In the meantime, let's get into Saints preview, where the Saints take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the second of our November division matches. As y'all mentioned earlier, we got Mike Evans and what's Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin, yep. With no Marshall and Lattimore. Maybe. Probably. Probably. No. I would assume. I would assume no. I mean, so, yeah, I think you have to assume no. The Eli. question is, what, what about what about Andrews Pete? Do I don't guess we know anything else about his injury. I don't uh, know great. So Hopefully we might have to go list, with a flu-less Armstead. <clears throat> Would it matter with Pete out? Well, yeah, that you got to go with Clap. Clap struggled this week, but Clap didn't struggle the last Everybody time. Everybody struggled this week, right? Uh, I think I I I. <clears throat> I, I am sorry, but I'm subscribing to the theory, excuse number seven, that they were hungover, distracted, or with not. Fo- I, I don't think this has to do with their. Uh, like, Will Clapp is a good player. Will Clapp stepped in and played like a maniac the last time Pete got hurt, or whoever it was. Maniac? That got hurt. Yeah, well, was he really whatever. a maniac? He was good enough. I'm a maniac. <laughs> a maniac, <laughs> maniac. <laughs> Did you eat paint chips as a child? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, no. Will Clapp is is good enough to step in and play. It, it, th- this game was the anomaly. This is not what you can expect. This, we know this team better than what you got Sunday. I'm not concerned about the O line. Yet, and let, now they come out and do this again, then there's concern. But I, we shouldn't be concerned about the offense. We shouldn't really be concerned about the defense, except for if Lattimore's out. But I still think they could. If you get pressure up front, then that'll make who who's going to be your number two cornerback now? Because Apple steps he, up. Peach, is it going to be PJ Patrick Robinson, Gardner Johnson? It's got to be one of those three. Please do Gardner Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, I like Arne Johnson. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know the way these, the way these receivers have been. Godwin's been one of the best receivers in the league this year. Yeah. Kind of like I said earlier, I think it, it might be kind of depending on the cornerback situation, might be kind of a track meet. Their cornerbacks are pretty bad. I think we threw all over them last game, last time we played them. Um, so it, it kind of, you know, kind of depends too if our receivers decide they want to catch the ball. You know, Ted Ginn and Drake Uh We know Michael <sighs> Thomas probably will, but. Um, you know, hopefully this game woke, you know, the Falcons game woke them up and, uh, and that woke, as they say, they woke. and, um, yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, can go out there and get a W. I mean, you would think eat, they're going to, <laughs> you, you would think that they're going to come out really, really motivated to, to, with fire under their ass. So. That'll be that'll be something to look for. They should. I mean, it's another divisional game. Um, the worst so thing for hopefully. Tampa was what happened to us this week. It's the worst thing for Tampa Bay because, again, everybody talks about how this happens to us every year. And look, yes, how it it you know what it doesn't do? It doesn't send us into a tailspin. It does the opposite. It sends us into a yeah. takeoff. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I appreciate the effort. Appreciate the, at least you tried. I tried. I, tried. Right. I was gonna say like tail up or I don't know whatever. That would oh god that that sounds like the Falcons marketing department right there. It really does. You're right. right. You know? Tail up, everybody. Shake our tail feathers. <laughs> Ooh, the guy with the hammer or whatever. Yeah. Uh, All right. What uh, uh, what do you think oh, the score man. is gonna be? Score prediction. Oh man, this is a hard one now after last week, isn't it? <laughs> right. I am just so worried about the. I, yeah, I know I just said the offense, but I'm. I feel like we're just too predictable. What are they no, going to do? Think, oh, Drew Brees going to throw it. That's what they're going to do. I honestly think we're going to run the shit out of the ball this week. 
We're going to go completely bend over backwards and go the other way. It might run 65%. Okay. Control the clock. Basically do the same thing the Falcons did to us. <coughs> I'll take it. So I'll go 27-21. I'm going to go a little higher. Um, I'm going to go 45. Oh, 30. shit. That's 45 to 30. <coughs> Right. Hey, like I said, I think it's going to be a track meet. I got to back it up with my score prediction. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. Track meet. I mean, they're going to Tampa's going to put up points, and I get what you're saying, Jason. But as, if they're throwing the ball on us, we're not running the ball 65 percent of the time. So I'm, I'm going to say 34, 31. Okay. Saints win with a last minute field goal. All right. Hey, let's let's have a good game. <laughs> yeah, back. he's the only guy who scored. <laughs> <laughs> got his mojo back. Said. But he did, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, just let him kick in the dome. That'll get his mojo back. Right. There you go. So. All right. Any final yeah, thoughts? Ha- just really, really neat, really need a, a big bounce back win here. We can't afford to, to fall behind. Some of these other NFC teams really can't. No. All right. Uh, then if y'all got nothing else. Oh, um, is this final thoughts? Yeah. I didn't hear you say it. Yeah, do you have a final thought? I do have a final thought. It's not sports related. That's okay. Don't is have, it, is don't, it politics related? Uh, sort of, but not. No, it's 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 human related. How about that? Don't uh, don't have hate in your heart. Love everybody, no matter what their beliefs, no matter what their religions. Just make the world a better place and love love everybody. Don't yeah. uh, not do something that you would normally do because of your hate for somebody else. That's like. You drink in poison and expecting to hurt the other person. Don't have hate in your heart. Hmm. Except for the Falcons. Except well, for the Falcons. Course. Fucking hate the Falcons. <laughs> Bama and the Falcons. You can hate them all you want. <laughs> all right. That's all the show we have for you right now. We're going to thank our loyal listeners for downloading each week and telling all of your friends about the Dome Patrol podcast. Follow us on Twitter for daily conversation. Like us on Facebook to watch live broadcasts. Subscribe on YouTube to watch or to listen as an alternative to your podcast app. And, of course, if you don't want to listen on any of those methods, you can always do it the old-fashioned way. Go to Dome Patrol Podcast. Dad, come. Say bye-bye, donkeys. Bye-bye, streaking donkeys. Good night, Hudat Nation.